How's it going, everybody? My name is Salty, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top five weapons to use here in Black Ops Cold War. Now, a couple people wanted me to do an updated top five weapons list here in Cold War. Now, that being said, this list is going to be very, very similar to my last one, just because there's been no weapon balancing. There's been no new weapons added to the game. So that means that a lot of you are going to be familiar with the weapons in the class setups on this list. Another thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that this is my top five weapons list. These are the weapons and class setups that I've had the most success with and I find the easiest to use. So your list could be completely different than mine. I always get comments on these top fives or top tens saying, oh, this weapon should totally be there. You're dumb. Like it's my list. It's what I feel is going to be the top five. So again, your list could be completely different than mine. But what I want you to do is go down in the comment section right now and give me your top five weapons here in Cold War. Now we're going to slide over to number five. All right. So this one, I believe, jumped down my list quite a bit. We have the AK-74U. Now, it's definitely a top five weapon in this game, and it is very good in competitive play. But when you go into public matches like many of us play here, I don't think I have many league play or competitive players here on the channel. Uh, outside of league play, it's not the best just because there's no G8 attachments and pubs. Everybody can use whatever the heck they have access to. You have free reign around the map. So that being said, we're going to slide through my attachments here, starting with the Spatsnaz Compensator. Now, this gives us vertical recoil control 12% there, and this is going to be necessary because I am using the Task Force Barrel. The Task Force Barrel gives us 6% damage, or I'm sorry, 8% damage, 50% effective damage range, and 75% bullet velocity. But you can, as you can see in those negatives, we are losing some vertical and horizontal recoil control. That's why the compensator is necessary. And this next attachment, the Spetsnaz Grip, 7% vertical and 21% horizontal. Now, it is very easy to control when you add the muzzle and the underbarrel here, but keep in mind, you should definitely stick too close in medium range gunfights with this build. Once you start to get into range, the recoil is a bit much to control. We're skipping over that magazine, going down to the handle here where I have the Gru Elastic Wrap. The Gru Elastic Wrap gives us the most amount of aim down sight speed, 90% flinch resistance, and ability to drop drop. Pretty simple attachment there. And finishing us off with the KGP Skeletal Stock, giving us 30% sprint to fire time, along with 10% also added to our aim walking movement speed, want you to go into game and use this one for sure. I have put this on the channel before, and I always seem to get positive feedback. So if you have not given this one a try, make sure you, again, go into game, come back into the comment section, let me know what you think about it. Let's slide over into number four. At number four, I have the FFAR-1. So the FFAR, aka the FAMAS, was not a weapon that I was a huge fan of until a subscriber told me to run a particular barrel. And once I did, my perception of the weapon changed entirely. Uh, that being said, this weapon was extremely good in like the preseason and season one of Cold War, but they nerfed it very, very quickly because I'm going to be honest, it was one of the most overpowered weapons ever in Cold War here. It was definitely like the top tier meta we've ever had. So let's get started here with the muzzle, the infantry compensator. The FFAR does have a spotty recoil control pattern, so you do need the recoil attachments. The infantry compensator gives us 12% here. Now, the barrel that we're talking about is the 20.3 inch takedown. Gives us 80% effective damage range, and the effective damage range is where the FFAR originally got nerfed. So that 80% now brings our effective damage range up to 22.86 meters. Now you may be thinking that's really not good for an assault rifle, but this is an aggressive slash medium range assault rifle, and the fire rate is so fast that you don't really notice the effective damage range drop off until you get into those long distance fights. So we're getting down to the underbarrel here with the field agent grip. I already talked about that spotty recoil pattern. So the field agent grip here is going to give us 6% vertical and 16% horizontal recoil control. Now, the recoil does spot around a bit once you get into longer range engagements, but it's very easy to control at medium range. Going to the magazine, I have the 38 round mag. Without it, it's kind of, you're sitting at like 25 bullets in the magazine. This does not sacrifice any aim down sight speed. You can also use the Stanag 44 round, jungle style, or SAS mag clamp. But I would steer clear of the 44 round fast mag and 38 round speed mag as we're sacrificing too much aim down sight speed here. And we are not using a handle where we're going down to the Raider stock, giving us 30% sprint to fire speed and 40% also for the aim walking movement speed. Now, this one takes a bit to get used to, if I'm being honest. It's just the recoil and the overall movement of the weapon. You need to learn how to play with it. Most assault rifles, you think you can take the longer range engagements. But with this one, you definitely need to use it more as so like a slower paced SMG. Uh, you got to take those medium. It will link win close range engagements because of the fire rate, but 
you don't want to get into an engagement with a mag 10 at close range it's just learning how to play with the weapon i'm telling you you're going to absolutely love this one at number three we have the vargo 52. now when this weapon was added i originally didn't like it all too much i'm gonna be honest it just felt a little funky the movement's a little weird uh you move around the map kind of slow but the fire rate is much like the ffar but the big difference is we have a ton of effective damage range meaning this is good at every single range on the map along with very low recoil so let's get started here i like to use the Gru suppressor this one can be substituted out for the compensator kgb eliminator the muzzle break 5.45 Whatever you so please. Personally, I like to keep myself off that mini map along with having that recoil control because it is still an aggressive weapon because of the firing. So being able to stay off the mini map will definitely help you streak up. For the barrel, the reinforced. The reinforced gives us 100% effective damage range and 40% bullet velocity. So going over to the statistics here, now this is where the big difference is. We are at a 66.03 meter effective damage range. That is miles higher than the FFAR and our bullet velocity is also at 875 meters per second. Uh, this is kind of just where it outclasses it. The fire rate is a bit slower by about 100 rounds per minute, but that being said, you have that much longer effective damage range, and that bullet velocity also sits in somewhat of the same category there. Getting down, we're skipping over the body and the underbarrel for the magazine. I like to use the 50 or 40 round mag, but the tape mags or the groom mag clamp are also good options, but I would steer clear of the fast mags simply because the reload speed on the Vargo is not particularly slow just with the normal magazines and also it's just a bit too much aim down sight speed sacrificed in my opinion all right so we're getting down to the handle grew elastograph most amount of aim down sight speed 90 percent flinch resistance and ability to drop shot and finishing it off with the skeletal stock giving us 30 percent sprint to fire time and 40 percent also to the aim walking movement speed now the vargo is one of those weapons that it was immediately a meta it's never been touched so many of you are already probably familiar with the vargo but if you are not this is definitely a class setup you need to give a go we're gonna get into number two at number two i have the world's most hated tech nine i uh, i understand people hate this weapon just because it's kind of been a meta here in cold war for a long period of time but i've always stated this on the channel i don't think it's the best weapon i think that people just because it's used so much people overlook the fact that you can still kill people with a tech nine and it's not the hardest thing to do it's just a, how you play them don't get up in there if they have the burst fire tech nine don't get too close to them it's like the ksp keep your distance as the damage range drop off will be there and that full auto tech nine really isn't that good in my opinion it's a slow fire rate with a four shot kill and it, it, that's just not that good as far as ttk goes yes it has low recoil but i still do not classify it as the best weapon in the game so let's start get started here personally on my tech nine for the best setup i like to use the burst fire repeater 17% fire rate, 10% horizontal recoil control. As you can see, sacrificing effective damage range, but we do not lose damage. We're at 50 damage per shot, meaning you can get a one burst kill, uh, which is the difference here between the full auto repeater. We are sacrificing 18% damage. It's at 41 damage, meaning it is going to be a four shot kill unless you're hitting headshots. Like I said, I don't think the full auto repeater is really that good. Not as good as people play it off to be. We're getting down to the barrel here where I have the 7.3 inch reinforced heavy. 18% effective damage range, 80% bullet velocity, making up for somewhat of what was lost there with the burst fire repeater being added. 17.27 meter effective damage range, your bullet velocity is up to 464.4 meters per second. Pretty good statistics there. I know some people like to use the task force barrel, but as you can see, the, the stats really aren't brought up that much and the damage isn't even like a big deal because it's already a one burst kill as is. And personally, I don't like sacrificing that recoil control there as you're gonna have to change some attachments around like you're gonna have to put an underbarrel on where as you can see on this build i don't have one we're skipping over the body and the underbarrel where i have the 39 round mag to keep our aim down sight speed a little more snappy while still having plenty of bullets in the magazine but this one is one that you can really use whatever you want uh for the handle we're going with the airborne elastograph giving us 30 percent aim down sight speed 90 percent flinch resistance and ability to drop shot and again with the raider stock giving us the most amount of sprint to fire speed and 10 percent also to our aim walking movement speed i feel like i've said my piece on the tech nine here and as you guys can see it's at number two so we're gonna slide over to number one a lot of you on this channel will not be surprised at number one we have my youtube famous lc10 this is the weapon that kind of blew up my channel in general when i ended up getting 200 kills over on nuketown with this exact class setup um the lc10 is a fast firing weapon with very low recoil above average bullet velocity but a low effective damage range but that gets make it made up for with that fire rate uh, i think it's just an overall easy weapon to use and you can fly around the map getting kills at close and medium range and it's not like a close gunfight the fire rate is so fast the recoil is so low that if you're hitting your shots 
you're probably winning the gunfight. You just want to make sure, of course, you're not getting shot at first. Uh, let's get started here. I always like to use the agency suppressor on my LC-10. I just feel like it just hits extremely well. Like, I have zero complaints about the agency suppressor. We are sacrificing effect damage range, so I can see where people maybe don't want to run that, and they maybe want to use the infantry compensator. But personally, I don't really find any issues with it. We are also getting that recoil control ability to stay off the map. For the barrel, I have the 14.5 inch Ranger. This gives us assault rifle like bullet velocity, really making it easy to take those medium range engagements. It's up to 820 meters per second. That is extremely high. That's on par with the Fargo. And that means your bolts are going to connect extremely quick at those longer ranges. And with the low recoil, you can definitely take those medium range engagements. And it's a 9.52 meter effect damage range yes but we have that great fire rate to make up for it and it thrives in those close range because of the fire rate getting down to our magazine we are skipping over the body and under barrel where i have the 50 round fast mag but use whatever you want here that's a big preference attachment getting down to our handle we have the airborne elastic grab giving us the most amount of aim down sight speed 90 percent flinch resistance ability to drop shot and once again with the raider stock 30 percent to our sprint to fire time and 10 percent also added to our aim walking movement speed so that is my top five weapons here in Black Ops Cold War. If you disagree with any of the weapons, make sure you let me know down in the comment section. Tell me exactly where you would put that weapon. Give me like a top 10 list if you so please. Tell me exactly where you would put each weapon on my list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you have not already. I'll see you guys in the next one.